my name is Jeff Don. I'm a professor of physics and atmospheric science at Dalhousie University. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, could you please begin by introducing yourself and describing the focus of your research and how and why you secured a partnership with Tesla to push that research forward? I've been working on lithium and lithium ion batteries for a very long period of time. Over the years, our group has developed some reputation for doing useful work. And in 2014, when Elon Musk announced the creation of his first gigafactory in Nevada, I just thought this was absolutely fantastic because it would bring lithium ion battery manufacturing on a large scale to North America really for the very first time. So I thought it would be really nice to be part of this because Tesla's mission of electrified transportation and grid energy storage and then later on solar power production really resonated with me a lot. And after some back and forth, they decided that they would do that. And, you know, we set out to try to help as best we could to uh, increase the energy density of lithium ion batteries, help lower their cost and improve their longevity. Obviously, uh, lithium ion batteries are present in, in EVs, in electrical vehicles, off grid uh, power networks, and a whole bunch of other applications. What do you see as the forces that are shaping this increased demand for lithium ion batteries? And what role do these batteries play uh, in terms of the decarbonization of our future economy as a whole? Well, it's a two part question. So really to answer the first part, pretty much everything you put in, put a lithium ion battery in becomes a better product. So for example, take the lawnmower. You can have a gas powered lawnmower. You have to put gas in it. You have to change the oil once a year. It's noisy as heck. A lithium ion powered lawnmower is completely maintenance free. There's no gas, there's no oil changes, and there's very little noise. And you can go on and on about various products, you know, cordless drills, cordless saws, even cordless snow blowers at this point, lithium ion powered snow blowers. And in the end, it just comes down to the fact that it's a better product, you know, and it goes right back to the smartphone, which wouldn't exist without the lithium ion battery. You know, and then when you talk about how lithium ion batteries play a role in helping us decarbonize. Well, it's sort of obvious in a way, by introducing electric vehicle, you eliminate all these tailpipe emissions. And then you have to go back another step and say, well, we have to make sure we're charging these electric vehicles with green electricity. You know, and there are many jurisdictions where there's not a lot of hydroelectric power. So in that, such a situation, you need to bring more solar and wind onto the grid. Those aren't always available. So you have to set yourself up so that you can store electrical energy when the wind blows and the sun shines with the giant battery storage system, be it lithium ion or some other chemistry not yet developed, and then deliver that energy back when the wind is not blowing and the sun is not shining. You know, so lithium ion batteries, are going to play a massive role in helping us to get where we need to go. From your perspective, as somebody who's deep within the Canadian uh, lithium ion battery ecosystem, how well positioned do you see Canada as being uh, within the lithium ion battery space uh, and in terms of its ability to compete in that, uh, that future? Well, you have to bear in mind a couple of things. You know, first, Canada actually developed the first rechargeable lithium battery that used lithium metal back in the mid 1980s at Mali Energy Limited in Vancouver. And Mali continued on to produce lithium ion batteries in Canada until about 2009. And now all of Mali's uh, product is produced in Taiwan. You know, so there's a long history of excellence in lithium ion technology here in, in the country. We have a lot of very talented researchers across the country in, in universities doing very good work. Quebec 
is a very well positioned in terms of abundance of raw materials that can support the lithium ion battery business. They have lithium, they have graphite, they have nickel, they have cheap green hydropower to uh, operate lithium ion battery manufacturing plants. And the Quebec government is aggressively courting companies to come and either make lithium ion batteries or active materials for the for the batteries. There's a lot of startups across the company across the country in both R and D and materials manufacturing. So we're coming along, but we're decades behind China, for example, and Korea, where you know massive lithium ion battery supply chain and manufacturing already exists. So we have a long way to go to, to get to where we need to be, but I think it's, um, you know, I'm optimistic we can get there. Is there anything that you would highlight as a key priority that has to be focused on in terms of getting us uh, increasingly competitive with those countries? Well, I suppose you have to decide, you know, what, what you want to do. Do you want to develop a material supply chain? Well, we got to open minds and and start to, you know, make make material. Do you want to build lithium ion cells at high volume here? Well, you've got to build manufacturing plants and, and move forward. So decisions have to be made, money has to be spent, and you have to move ahead if you if that's the way you want to go. And there's, there's no reason we shouldn't because the lithium ion battery is going to be used, like I mentioned, in electric vehicles and grid storage in a very large way. Well, Jeff, I'd like to ask what you see as Canada's top uh, competitive advantages in terms of the battery space uh, and also in the EV space as well, if you could comment on that. There was a study commissioned by Investment Quebec on the suitability of a Quebec as a, as a location for lithium ion battery manufacturing. And this was, study was performed by an organization called Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, which is pretty reputable. And anyway, this study concluded that for a lithium ion battery manufacturing plant of quite a significant size, so about 60 gigawatt hours or larger, this is, uh, a little bit bigger than the Tesla Gigafactory in, in Nevada. The conclusion of the report was the best place to site a plant of that size or larger is Quebec. And the reason is the abundance of green power, the proximity to the resources that are required for manufacturing lithium ion batteries and so on and so forth. You know, so if one believes that, that report, then one says in principle, it should be quite attractive to do lithium ion manufacturing in Quebec. We have Lion Electric Energy in Quebec, which makes electrified school buses and electrified garbage trucks. They're going to be building a very large battery assembly plant in St. Jerome. And they're, to me, it looks like they're doing all the right things. We have here in Nova Scotia, a startup called Novonix. I guess they're not a startup anymore, formed in 2014, but they, they make high precision test equipment for the battery industry. They have a, a plant in Tennessee that makes synthetic graphite for the negative electrode of lithium ion batteries. And they're uh, establishing a pilot plant in, in Nova Scotia for the positive electrode material. So they're, you know, in, in many different spaces that are very important for moving the technology forward. 